folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making cornbread dressing. Okay, cornbread dressing is one of those recipes that's probably as old as cornmeal. Um, and what you need is you need one recipe of cornbread. And if you don't have a favorite cornbread recipe, the basic recipe has a cup of cornmeal and a cup of flour in it. I do have a couple videos up. You can watch those and make your cornbread. You want to make your cornbread at least a day ahead of time and kind of let it dry out a little bit. If you don't have time to make your cornbread ahead of time, you can put it in your oven on about 200 degrees for 20 or 30 minutes, crumble it up and put it in there and that'll dry it out enough so that you can use it in this recipe. You need a medium onion chopped up, at least a cup of onion, and you need at least a cup of celery chopped up. This is about three stalks. And you need about two to two and a half cups of broth. And you can use the broth out of your turkey, or you can use chicken broth, or you can buy canned broth. Um, this is out of some uh, chicken that I baked. I just saved the broth out of it, and it works great. You need three eggs, a stick of butter, some sage. You can also use poultry seasoning, seasoning in this if you don't have sage. And I like to put a little thyme and a little parsley in it. It just adds a little more color more than it really adds flavor. Uh, we're going to start by uh, frying our celery and our onions in our butter until they are tender. They'll be kind of translucent. You don't really want to brown them. So what I do is I cook these um, with a lid on them. That way they get tender, but they don't get brown. So we're just going to take this over to the stove. Um, turn the stove on about medium heat. And put your butter in here. You don't need to be real particular about how this is added or anything. You don't have to like melt your butter off first or anything like that. It'll melt and mix in just fine. And like I said, you want at least a cup of each. But that medium onion gave me plenty and the three stalks of celery gave me plenty. You do want to chop it up kind of fine. And you got to have a little salt and pepper. Now, how much salt and pepper you put in this is kind of dependent on how much you like. It also depends on what kind of broth you're using. If you're using a canned broth, you're not going to want to put much salt in here at all. Um, if you've really salted your chicken or your turkey heavy, you might not want to put much salt in it. But these onions and the celery, they need a little salt and pepper in them. So that's kind of to taste. You're probably going to do about a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper and maybe a half teaspoon of salt. But that's up to you. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on here. And I'm going to put my lid on that. And we'll just let that sit there and cook for a while. It'll take mm, maybe 15 minutes, possibly a little bit longer. You do want them tender, but like I said, you don't want them really brown. Now, I love caramelized onions, and the flavor that caramelized onions have is just wonderful, but that's not the color that you want in your dressing. You want to keep the, the white in the onions, and you want to keep the green in the celery. While that's fried, we're just going to come over here and we're going to crumble our cornbread up. And like I said, make this at least a day ahead of time. And you want to crumble it up pretty small. It 
it's okay to leave a few chunks in this but you don't want any real real big pieces because you are making dressing not just a pan of cornbread and you want to get the broth and the spices and the egg and everything all mixed in it um, that pan of cornbread it gave us about six cups of crumbs you want to have between six and eight cups of crumbs if you're making this out of something different and if you need a gluten-free version of this you can pick your favorite gluten-free bread whatever kind you like cut the crust off and toast it and cube it up or crumble it whichever way you want to do it until you have about six cups and you can use gluten-free bread in this if you need to now I'm going to add my spices to my dried crumbs here I want about a tablespoon of sage and I'm using rub sage you do want to be careful if you use dried sage uh, it's a little more potent you might not want to put quite that much in it and by the way three teaspoons is a tablespoon and I'm gonna put me a couple of teaspoons of parsley in there this is just kind of to add color to it um, you can use a little more it doesn't change the flavor that much and I'm gonna put a teaspoon of thyme in it if you have a particular seasoning that you like a lot you can add it to that this is not one of those recipes that's super particular about measurements or spices if there's a flavor you like put it in there um, a lot of people like bell peppers in this like green bell peppers and that will make a slightly sweeter version because bell peppers are sweet so if you'd like go ahead and dice up a few little green bell peppers and put them in with your peppers and your onions but make sure you cook them until they get tender or your the whole consistency of your dressing won't be right okay we can kind of just stir these spices up in these crumbs and you can see here I've got a few bigger chunks that's fine some of those will get busted up as we add other ingredients but I made this cornbread ahead of time and you can tell it's really dry because it crumbled all up if you made it that far ahead of time and tried to eat it as cornbread it would probably choke you to death if you want a vegetarian version of this dish you can substitute milk for your broth in other words you don't put any broth in it you would just use a couple cups of milk and you can make the same recipe and it's vegetarian I'm gonna go ahead and get these eggs ready now we're not gonna add the eggs until after our vegetables are done cooking because I don't want the cornbread to get all soggy you do want to beat them up just a little bit now if you want to use this to stuff your turkey with you're going to cook your vegetables and you're going to have your eggs and you're going to add the the butter and you might want to cut your butter down a little bit too maybe cut it down to half a stick of butter but you're going to add that and your onions and your celery and your eggs into this and then you would stuff the bird with that but not add the broth because your turkey is going to have plenty of juice in it to make this moist so just leave this out and put everything else in it and put that in the turkey before you bake it and let's check on our vegetables and we're going to go ahead and turn our oven on 350 and get it preheating okay it's definitely going to be another minute because our butter is not even really melted good but this will give us a chance to kind of combine the salt and the pepper and the butter and the onions and the celery now if somebody in your family used to make giblet dressing out of that little bag of stuff that comes in your turkey and you are particularly fond of organ meat or you like organ meat and you want to put that in 
you would add the contents of that little bag of giblets that comes in your turkey in the pan with your peppers and your onions and your butter and cook it in with this. And that's how you make giblet dressing. I'm not sure I would ever recommend that a parent force a child to try something because when I was a child I was forced to try liver and I was forced to try celery and at 50 years old I still don't like either one of them. So that might not work. Okay, that still has quite a few more minutes. So we're just going to let it sit there with the lid on it and cook, like I said, till it's all tender. While you're waiting on that, um, you do need to find the pan that you want to use to cook this in. And I'm going to make mine in the same cast iron skillet that I baked my cornbread in. And you do want to grease it. Um, you could make this in any glass casserole dish or metal baking dish. You know, just a 9 by 13 baking pan of any kind. Um, make sure you grease it good. And you can use whatever you want to grease it with. I like the flavor of butter. And um, the butter is natural, so you're not adding anything artificial to it. Just take your fingers and kind of rub that in the pan good. Uh, I'm not going to preheat this skillet like I do when I'm making cornbread. You could, though. You could put it in the oven and get this butter really hot and melted, but it's not going to do the same thing that it does on the bottom of your cornbread. So just make sure your pan's greased good with whatever you choose to use. You can use a cooking spray or something if you want. Now it's better, it soaks in better um, to the crumbs if you heat up your um, broth. So when my vegetables get done, I'm just going to dump my broth in with the pan with the vegetables for just a minute to warm it up so that it soaks into my crumbs better and mixes in easier. You know, while we're all busy getting ready for Thanksgiving and Christmas, it's easy to lose sight of God during this time and it's easy to lose sight of the reason why we really have these holidays. Thanksgiving is all about being grateful for the blessings that He's given us. And you can't say Christmas without saying Christ. And I know there are a lot of Christians who debate about whether it's actually Christ's birthday. But I'm kind of um, of the same opinion that Samantha is. Any holiday where you can say Christ over and over and over and over and over and bring him to mind of people who maybe wouldn't necessarily hear about him, that's my kind of holiday. So I'm celebrating Christmas as Christ's birthday. Even though the date may be off, it's at least a reason to say his name to people who may not hear it. But with all the decorating and the gifts and the dinners and the getting and the giving, this is a time of year when more people commit suicide than any other time. There are more uh, incidents of domestic violence. The police respond to more calls for domestic violence than any other time of the year. And I think that's because we lose that focus. We don't see Christ in it. We don't count our blessings. Rather than looking at what we have and what we have to be grateful for, we look at what somebody else has got or somebody else is getting. Somebody else is, you know, spending $2,000 a piece on their kids for Christmas. Somebody got a new car and maybe somebody's got their whole family coming in and you don't have you may be all alone and not have anybody at all so I want to do two things in the comments of this video well in the comments of the video the first thing I want to do is I want you all to leave a comment some blessing that you received maybe something that you received at a time where you were just struggling it might have been something that you weren't even praying for just somebody said, here's something to ease your burden. Or here, God wanted me to give this to you. 
or you know whatever maybe there was a healing or something this doesn't have to be like the biggest miracle of your life that you leave the comment about just some little something that somebody did that let you know that God still sees you he still is there for you and I'm gonna give you my story right now instead of in the comments when our kids were all teenagers we had a lot of teenagers over at our house because we had four girls when you have four girls they attract a crowd their girlfriends come boys come every single holiday there was a party at our house every single weekend I probably fed 25 people dinner every night and teenagers eat a lot and at that time Brett and I were struggling financially um, there was some job problems and stuff but we were still doing it because we had kids you know that was life you have to do it and a friend of ours she'd been our friend for years and years and years our kids had played together when they were little and I hadn't really even seen her for a long time she sent over a hundred pounds of meat it was boneless chicken breast and ground chuck and she said God told me that you could use this a hundred pounds of meat just fell out of the sky and I didn't have to buy meat for oh two weeks probably but it was it let me know that God saw that struggle that feeding all those kids every single weekend was a burden it really was but it was something that I felt like I had to do and it was just a part of life it wasn't even something that I maybe necessarily realized was such a burden until all of a sudden here comes a hundred pounds of meat but anyway that was that thing that let me know in my struggle that God saw my struggle and he was still walking with me okay and the other thing I want to encourage you all to do this holiday season between Thanksgiving and Christmas is learn Psalm 100 because it's all about praising God and giving thanks and that's what we should be focused on right now not on the presence, not on what somebody else has. We should be praising God and giving Him thanks because that's what this time of year is mostly about. And I'm going to memorize this. I haven't memorized it yet, but I've started. I want something else memorized that I can call to mind when I want something positive in my head. I've been doing the 23rd Psalm for years, and I told you all how that was working out. So Psalm 100 starts out, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not ourselves. We are his people, the sheep in his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endureth for all generations. It's not that long, I should have already memorized it. But work on that between now and Christmas and that will give you something positive that you can have. You can hold on to it, it'll be in your heart, it'll be in your mind. And when all of the busy stuff and the activity gets to be too much or maybe when you start feeling a little bit sad about something that you don't have in your life right now recite that remember that pull that out of your heart and I hope it helps to ease some of the burdens that pop up during the holiday season and I hope it helps to put it you all us all in a more thankful frame of mind let's check on these vegetables Okay, these look pretty good. Um, you can see the onions have turned colors. You can kind of see through them. The celery is a much paler shade of green and you can kind of start to see through it a little bit too. Now remember, if you're going to stuff the bird with this, you just want to take this and the egg and add that to your crumbs. But if you want to bake this in a pan separate, 
Go ahead and add your broth to your vegetables just to warm it up a little bit. I mean, we don't want to make it boiling because we got to mix it up, but if you're using canned broth or maybe you didn't just dip it out of your turkey or your chicken or whatever, you do want to heat it up because you don't want any big lumps of fat in it. Alright, that's pretty good. Our oven is preheated to 350 now. I'm going to be very careful carrying this. Normally I just do this all on the stove. Okay, just pour this over your cornbread. Give these eggs another little whisk here. I'm going to mix this up a little bit because I don't want to cook my eggs on top of my vegetables. And that cornbread is going to cool down that broth mixture. And then go ahead and dump your eggs in. Okay, now I had just a little bit over two cups of broth. And you can see that's plenty of liquid with what was in the celery and um, the onions, the butter that I put in there. This is really moist. You want it um, actually about like your cornbread batter. It's going to be a similar consistency to the cornbread batter. Make sure you get that all mixed up in there good. And like I said, you can bake this in glass. You can bake it in your iron skillet. Um, you can bake it in just a metal casserole dish. But you're just going to dump it in there. see the peppers or not the peppers you can see the celery and the onions all in it you want to spread it out now this is going to take 30 45 minutes maybe depends on your oven um, on how much moisture you have in it uh, but you want to cook it until it sets up and the um, eggs are what make it set up it'll be solid kind of like um, it won't be as dry as cornbread, but it will be as dense as cornbread when it's done. So it'll be a lot more moist than the cornbread, but it will still be pretty dense. I mean, when you take it out of here, when you scoop it out, it will be a solid piece. And the eggs do that. It's like a casserole. And you want to cook it until it gets brown, and it will get brown as it cooks on the inside and dries out on the top. So... We'll put this in the oven and we'll come back and check on it when it's brown. <laughs> it took about 45 minutes to bake this pan of dressing. Now, this is a really forgiving recipe. Um, if you get too much broth in it, you just cook it a little longer. And you know it's done when it turns brown on top and it's also going to be firm if you remember when we poured it in there it was almost like a liquid and you can see it's really firm now when I push down on it it doesn't give it all um, generally speaking you want to serve this in whatever pan you cook it in and you're just going to kind of spoon it out uh, it's going to stay together in a chunk. It's not a batter anymore. Like I said, it's very firm. You can turn it out of this onto a plate or a serving platter if you want to. If you baked it in a, a, a glass casserole dish, it might be a little bit harder to get it out. But generally, when you bake something in a glass casserole dish, you intend to serve it in that. If you wanted to do it in a pan like this and you wanted to put it on a platter and serve it, let it cool and you can flip it right out of there and put it on a plate or some sort of platter and it'll work fine like that. Or you can leave it in this. 
if you do it in a metal pan, uh, like just a regular 9 by 14 dish that you would make a casserole in or something, the, you know, the thinner aluminum ones, you probably won't be able to get it out of those. You'll have to serve it in those. But I hope you try this this Thanksgiving. It is a very forgiving recipe. I said if you get too much broth, cook it a little longer. If you're in a hurry, you can turn the oven up and cook it a little faster. Turn the oven up to 400. Just keep an eye on it. When you start to smell it and it starts to turn brown and it gets real firm like this, it's done. Um, it doesn't care if you cook it at 400 degrees. It'll be fine and it will be a little faster. This would have probably cooked in 30 minutes at 400 degrees instead of 45 minutes at 350. So try it this Thanksgiving. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to leave those um, encouraging comments. Share your blessings with everybody else. Give us all a little boost this Thanksgiving and Christmas. And it will also give you a little boost to remember those times. A lot of you have been stopping by yesteryear to say hi. I have enjoyed meeting every single one of you. A few people have come by when I wasn't at work. Um, you can call yesteryear and make sure I'm there before you plan a trip or make sure I'm going to be there. I normally work Tuesday through Friday now. Um, around 10 to 5, I'm usually there every day. So if you're planning a trip though, Give us a call. Make sure I'm not going to be gone somewhere. Make sure the store is not going to be closed. It is closed every Monday, Sunday and Monday. And I'm not usually there on Saturday. But thanks for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. Until next time, remember to put God first. Happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, and we'll see y'all next time.